Alleluia. Open his eyes that he may see. Please give us the word on the screen. Uh, chapter 6, sorry. Chapter 6, verse 8 to 19. 2 Kings chapter 6, not 8. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 8 to 19. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 8 to 19. Mm -hmm. Then the king of, of Syria uh -huh. warred against Israel mm -hmm. and took counsel with his servants, mm -hmm. saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. Mm -hmm. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, mm -hmm. for thither the Syrians are come down. Mm -hmm. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of, and saved himself there, not once nor twice. Verse 11. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was so troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will he not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? Hallelujah. Amen. The enemy is convinced that there is a spy in his camp. Hallelujah. Because he sees that whatever he conveyed in his own chamber. Hallelujah. The man of God was able to know it. I don't know how you see it, but I do know that you can ask God to send a spiritual spy for you to gather the information. Like we call it gather intelligence. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Whatever that uh, the enemy or the adversary is putting together, you can simply ask God, Lord, gather intelligence for me. Because I need to know where they put the trap. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And when I say trap, I say trap. Put it this way. In this world, you have people whose heart is so much wicked that they don't mind to make you lose your job. So they will tell you, go do this. And that this that they told you, the boss said that whosoever does this will be fire. Are you what I'm saying? For you to walk and to have a heart of God does not mean that your neighbor has a heart of God. And if you do not know what's the plans of the enemy, you will always be put back at the line. Because what was due unto you will be taken away from your hands because you will trust the one who lied to you and put that in his hand. And now you sit expecting that that one are Jesus. In Africa, they call it 419, right? 419, they come to you, they say they're going to help you build your house or buy a land. And they convince you of the pictures that they had. And you trust them. You put your money in their hand. Two months after, they don't know you. And sometimes the 419 is not your neighbor, it's your brother. Are you what I'm saying? So at the end of the day... What will make you have a shape in your spirit is that God has to help you gather intelligence into what the enemy is attempting to do to derail the plans of God in your life. You can no longer walk with grace only. You see what I'm saying? Grace means that when you are in problem, then you call for grace, but you can avoid problem. Are you know what I'm saying? Because this king, he did not only go inside the trap and call on God. He knew how to avoid also the trap. Lord, gather for me intelligence. Give me the spirit. Give me the sight so I may know the trap and escape it. When the Bible says that the devil is a deceiver, he does not deceive you with uh, something that you will know it is a deceitful. It's a, uh, it's a deceit. Hallelujah. A deceit is not intended to make you know that is a lie. <laughs> Hallelujah. A deceit is intended to make you know or believe that it is true. Continue please for me. Verse 11. Death, verse 12. 
And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel. <laughs> Continue. The prophet that is in Israel telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. <laughs> the king of Syria, he's confused. He said, Among you, who is taking, first and foremost, the guy, uh, uh, he says, the word that thou speakest in that bedchamber. So his secret place, his private place. It's not even in the palace to say that he was sitting at the, at the, at the table of eating. In his bedchamber. It could have been that there were one or two who were standing over there to give him the drink or whatever, or the, the towel or whatever. It's among you. Who is the one going to the king of Israel to tell him that I'm going to entrap him in that such a place? But how is that the one who spoke to him knew he was a prophet in the land? I like, are you what I'm saying? How come that the one who spoke, the servant of, of that king, how, instead of saying it's none of us, but how does he know that not only is none of them, but it is somebody in the land that is receiving the information from the divine? How does he know? The God of intelligence. <laughs> Hallelujah. The God of intelligence. They say, we did not do that, but we know who did it. They went to the king of Israel camp, trying to figure out who does those things, who told you those things. Ah, huh? is the prophet Elisha? And the Bible says, and one of his servants said, "None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet, that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in that chamber." Let's go thirteen. Verse 13, and he said, go and spy with And go and <laughs> spy. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We pray only, but the enemy got intelligence. So you got to gather intelligence in the spirit too. Are you what I'm saying? Because you cannot only pray in a defensive prayer. You see what I'm saying? When problem comes, then you pray to break through. No, you can pray to avoid the problem too. Uh, am I right? Because the enemy clearly is going to spy. Let, 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 let me put it this way. When the children of Israel were coming out of Egypt and they arrived in the land, before to enter the land, uh, I mean, they arrived in the wilderness, before to enter the land, what did they do? They went to, they went to gather intelligence. Amen. So you have to put yourself in a position where the strategy of the Spirit of God helps you to first know what's the camp of the enemy. What, what do they do? What are the plans? Mm, Jesus. But if you jump and then you say, the Lord shall be with me. No problem. Go. <laughs> Amen. But you can also say, uh, uh, the law already said, I uh, will have the land. You see, the law already said that we have the land, but they got the intelligence. The only problem you want to not have, you, you, you want not to have any other mind but the one of Joshua or Caleb. Because sometimes when you get the intelligence you yourself, you are frightened. <laughs> Imagine you pray, you pray, you pray. Oh Lord, reveal unto me, reveal unto me, reveal unto me. And in the night, you see a dragon with a knife falling out after you. And then you wake up. Hey, I got it, I got it. No, you got the intelligence. The Lord was showing you that there is a dragon. <laughs> oh, somebody help me. Let me put it again. You pray. You ask the Lord to reveal things to you. What you don't know is that when God reveals unto you, he reveals unto you in the future. You see what I'm saying? 
He can also reveal unto you in the past, right? But when he reveals things unto you, you have to know whether he reveals unto you or whether you are just being pursued. I hear what I'm saying. There is a difference into what God reveals unto you and what is happening to you. So you pray. And in the night, you see four cats. One yellow, one red, one green, and one orange. <laughs> you see them following after you, running after you. And then one of them go in front of you, and when you come, you say, hey. It's dream. Dream everything is possible. Am I right? Yes. It's dream. If, if you don't know if it's possible, ask to John. Yes. When he went up, he saw what was over there. He said, what dictionary is this one? He cannot find in the vocabulary dictionary the word to describe what he saw. When Ezekiel went, he saw a guy who was having wings. He looked at the wings. He see eyes inside the wings. He's like, do I have to cut it down, cast it down? What, 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 what do I do exactly? Because in heaven, John says that the beast say what? Holy, holy, holy. He see creatures according to our cultures. When you see those creatures, you bind them, you cast them, you cut them. <laughs> Amen. But when he saw them, that's where the creatures that were on the side of God. Oga. Somebody say Oga. Come back. <laughs> Hallelujah. So here comes. God reveals unto you things that you prayed for. Now, when you see those things, you out now to discern whether because you see in the camp in the in, in the case of uh, Elisha, the Lord spoke unto him that the enemy is placing a trap in this area. Hallelujah. So that revelation was for him to avoid it, not to break it and go through. Does it make sense? Sometimes you fall in the trap of the enemy not because God has not rescued you. It's because God has shown you that you should not go that way and you have won anyway expecting God to protect you. Are you what I'm saying? You have to first have the discernment where is God telling you not to go through and where is God telling you go through. If he shows you something so you can avoid it, then your, your duty is to avoid it. I even I'm saying. If you pray, oh Lord, show me, oh show me, and show me, and, and he shows you, and he says, there is a king who's entrapping you. Imagine you are in your, your place. And for some reason, your boss is always after you. And then you pray, oh Lord, reveal unto me what's going on. And in your dream, you see your colleague who always take your shoe and go put it on the table of the boss. This means that there is somebody that is causing you trouble, lying on you and bringing, because shoe in the Bible, you know what it means, right? It's covenant. So the person will bring word that he has not heard from your mouth and he goes put it into the place into the hearing of the boss but you see if the boss has already had trust in that person it does not mean the person is trustworthy are you following people can have trust in a person it does not mean the person is trustworthy so that person will come and now start now spilling. But when God reveals unto you, you have now to know how to walk. Amen? Let's go back to the word, please. Thank you, Gracie. Verse 13. And he said, mm. Go and spy where he is that I may send and fetch him. 
and it was and it was told him saying behold he is in dotan mm -hmm. therefore send the tighter horses and chariots and a great host and they came by night and compassed the city about mm. and when the servants of the man of god was risen early and gone forth behold an host compassed the city both with horses and chariots and his servant said unto him alas my master how shall we do hallelujah amen all this army it was for who elisha instead of gathering his army to go attack israel <laughs> he's gathered his entire army for one guy i don't know if you like if you understand what it means is that the devil can rise the entire nation just because he wants to get you. And you thinking, no, is a is a is a common, common, is a is a is a how we call it? Is a general issue. Ah! Oh, God help me with this one. You are in your chamber praying, you say, Oh Lord, Daddy, don't okay. The devil gathered the entire nation, the Congress, the Senate, the, 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 the justice system. And you, you say, no, this is not about me. But listen, <laughs> you have first to identify who you are in the kingdom. Daniel, amen? He was among the Chaldeans, but he was not a... When the day arrived, because they wanted to take rid of him, get rid of him, what did they do? They gathered and they wrote a law for one man. For only one man, they wrote an entire law. And that law was not addressed to him. But they, because of him, they addressed the law to the nation. Try to camouflage that that law was for the nation. But you, the, the enemy sent to fetch Elijah. What I'm trying to say is you must have understanding of what God is revealing unto you. So that uh, you do not uh, take them lightly and then walk uh, disorderly. Because if God is showing you that uh, there is something that is going to take you off. And then you say, I'm going to go through anyway. Unless God tells you go. Unless God tells you, hey, I'm showing you what you're going to go through. Then you will have to go through. Unless. If he has not, sh like in the case of uh, Paul. When Paul was spoken unto by Agabus, Agabus told him, whosoever belongs that belt shall go through this, 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 this. Amen? But it was because the Lord Jesus already appeared unto Paul and told him, you will go to, through this, 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 this. Are you, are you following? But if the Lord told you that they'll go unto the land and possess and get rid of those who possess you in, were in the land before you, it means you will not have to be the one who will go down. Are you following? So you have to identify first, what did the Lord tell you at the beginning? Are you supposed to overcome or to go through? If you are supposed to overcome, you cannot simply decide to go through and then now call on the Lord. Mm -mm, it won't work. It will not. Tell to somebody, it will not work. Pastor Martin, it won't work. Pastor. Julie, it will not work. Pastor. Put for me on the word. Hey, we know what go, mama, mama. <laughs> and he answered and said what? And he answered, fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Why? Why you, sh what, what did the Lord say last time? That he does not answer the prayer of, or worries. 
Before you start to pray, we say like the last time the Lord said that you have to first step to the situation to be still. And as I told you last time, I experienced it. I was going to meet a big nationwide builder. Very big guy. I mean, they're huge. So I was thinking, ah, this is Satella Power. Oh, Satella Power is divine, but it is still in the house. <laughs> so I'm going to meet him. What, what, what should I say? So as I was going, I was, I mean, as I was preparing, I was, uh, I would say that, nervous. And suddenly the word of God came back to my mind. Before you start praying, tell to the situation to be still. Because God does not answer a prayer of worries by a prayer of faith. So I did it. Be still. And indeed, I saw the hand of God. So if first thing first, before he does anything, he say, fear not. Who said the same thing in the New Testament? The Lord Jesus. When he appeared to people, what happened? <laughs> fear not. Peace be with you. Or the angels. When they appear. And then peace. Until you have peace, you cannot hear it. Oh, somebody... Ah, Jesus Christ. Until you have peace, you cannot hear it. You will pray. You will fast. But if you pray and fast, and you pray and fast in worry, with worry, by worries, <laughs> when you finish, you will not hear it. Ah. You must command a be still to whatever that is. Fear not is what God has spoken throughout the entire Bible. Fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not. Why? Because he knows that the nature of man is to fear. And he answered, fear not. For for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Now, there's a problem. You cannot see. The one who sees tells you what he sees. But because you don't see, you're like, mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm. Sometimes people say, if God does not show unto me, I will not move. But fire is coming. And God says, move. You see, mm -mm. God cannot, cannot shoot to me. You see, I told you last time there was a lady who came with her husband from Nigeria. And they bought for him a house. Bought for him a big house. And they were somewhere in Oklahoma. When he saw the house, he and his wife, they prophesied in tongues. Kebado. <laughs> Prophesying is one thing, but prophesying in tongues is another one. They broke into every prophecy of the Spirit. The next day, the guy sleep. The Lord comes to him to speak to him. That by the time the morning arrives, if you have not left the United States, you're a dead man. He has arrived in the United States. They bought for him a house. Free of charge. And then you tell him he has to go back to the glow glow of uh, the Nigeria. <laughs> uh, every devil, I will cast you out. <laughs> and the Lord speaks again. So trembling and in all confusion and panicking, he gets up, round to his wife. Hey, we got to get out. We got to go. We got to go. We have to leave. And the wife says, why? Where? What's going on? The Lord has spoken that, hey, if we don't leave before 5 a.m. in the morning, we are dead. Oh. The wife said, did he speak to you or to us? <laughs> 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 
Why are you associating me in your problem? Okay. Your vision is your vision. My vision is my vision. What is that between you and I? Your problem is not my problem. Your benefit is my benefit. But your problem is not my problem. <laughs> yeah, she was right. So she said, tell God, you can, you can speak to me too. <laughs> and indeed, the message was not for both of them. The message was for the guy. So he packed himself. He called the, the guy who bought the house. He was a lead pastor or something. He said, it was about 4 a.m. And he has one hour to leave. But he doesn't have a car to drive. So he called the guy, I need a ride. I need to go. I need to go. And then the guy said, what's going on? Will we come in the morning? He said, no morning. Oh, I must leave now. And the guy tells him, but we're going to solve it. Like, just go sleep and pray. He said, ah. God said, I must leave before 5 a.m. I forgot the name of the guy. He bends on that door, will be there, Idaosa. 5 a.m. He was already gone. She stayed. But down the road later on, God had mercy on him. And God brought him back. Amen. But here's the point. When God gives you an instruction, don't play fool. Hallelujah. He might not want to destroy you. All he wants to see is to see if you truly have faith in him or faith in the things he gave you. Abraham. Yeah. Are you serving God because he's blessing you? Or are you serving God because he's called you? Abraham, I'm going to bless you. Here's a child. Take it and now go kill it. Eh. You know, I always said, if I was Abraham... I will send in the wilderness to find Aga and bring back Ishmael. I say, if I give this one to God, I have to have this one. <laughs> yeah, you take over here, you give over there. <laughs> I mean, that's reality because you guys, you know the story. That's why. But if you don't know the story, it was about you. Let, let, me, let me give you the proof. When you receive your paycheck and God tells you give, what do you do? You don't give. What you do is that you go pay your bill first. But, but you say it's God who gave you the job. So if God gave you the job, whose salary is for? So you always say God gave me the job. But the day God said now, give me. You say, ah, Lord, wait. Pay my bill first. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? That's because God knows. You cannot say that God bless you and at the same time, maybe put this way, you broke, you have nothing. And then God lifts you up. If you are broke and God lifts you up, is he not able to lift you up? The problem is not that God is not able. The problem is that your heart has departed from where it should be. So fear enters your heart. Because at the, this one, once you understand it, it is a soft problem. You did not have. I remember in Africa, we eat a uh, uh, yam. <laughs> Apioca. Sometimes we take, uh, we, uh, that, you know, there was ladies who were sitting at the, at the, at the line of the road, the uh, roadside, and they sell sometimes banana braise. And I will say that. Plantain, broiled, roasted, roasted, roast, roasted. And then sometimes with fish, sometimes with what? Plum, sometimes with uh, arashid. And I will say that. Peanuts. Avocat. So all you have to do is just to have sanfra. Sanfra is a what? One hundred reference CFA is about like a one cent or two cents. And you go, you pay, <laughs> you say you pay, uh, you buy um, 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 roasted banana for two, 25, 25, francs. And then you buy uh, arachide, 25. 
This is 75 francs. And then you have 25. That 25 you put in your pocket. And sometimes if you take it, you buy de l'eau sachet 5 francs. And then you put your 20 francs inside. So with less than with, with one penny or couple penny, you divide those penny in four. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even give to God. The rest remain in your pocket. <laughs> so now you broke. And God gave you. You see what I'm saying? After God gave you, you are still struggling to give him. But if you do not ask for God to shape your mind, and shape your heart so you fear not of the things of this world, the world will have a reason over you. So the servant of uh, Elisha, he was with Elisha, the man of God. God already answered the man of God. Amen? He was already answered, like, he already speaks to Elisha. But fear Cause him to not pray the right way. So the man of God says, before you start your prayer, first thing, remove the fear first. Remove that worry first. Tell it be still. Remember the disciple. They were with the Lord Jesus. You and I, we pray that the Lord Jesus will show himself to us. But they were with him physically. They already saw him Make miracles. This one I don't understand. They saw him. He did miracles. He raised the dead. They saw him in the power of multiplication of the, of the food. But it looks like they only believe God for others. The day they have to believe God for themselves. Now they were screaming. And the Lord gets up. He said, before I even answer you, let's say first, be still. And then he addresses him. So Elisha does the same thing. And you must do the same thing. If two people argue, <laughs> Who say what? By the same two people who argue against each other, if somebody comes in to say, okay, tell me what's going on. Suddenly, the one who was arguing with the other one now starts speaking. So it means you have the ability to speak, but you argue with you and then da, 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 da. So all you have to do is first and then Fear not. Fear not. Give back the word, please. Verse 17. And Elisha prayed. And Elisha prayed. And said. And said. Lord. Lord. I pray thee. I pray thee. Open his eyes. Open his eyes. Now, let me, let me, let me ask you. Whose eye God has to open? In your life, who is the servant? Your flesh is the servant. Because your flesh is meant to serve the will of God. If you tell to your flesh, do this, it will do. If you tell to your heart, be still, it will be still. If you tell to your mind, worry not, it will not worry. But if your mind is worrying, your flesh is trembling, your heart is in trouble, and then you spend your time, oh, what shall I do? What shall I do? You will have high tension. <laughs> I, I say that I pay tension. I would call it high blood pressure. Because let me tell you something that you may not know or you may know. Is that your heart pumps what? Blood, right? And in, okay. So there is a stream 
of blood that has to go at the right normal and speed. So when your heart, because your heart do, so it, and so it gives at the right speed. When your heart are now racing, it just, so it gives this blood at the dysfunctional speed. And your blood just keep on going, and now your nerves start sending signal, and your thalamus start getting now anxious, and now suddenly, I say, ah, you have a, 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 a cardiac, uh, how was it that? A cardiac RX. Only worry can kill somebody. The person is there by worry. They say witch and witch and wizard has killed him. Worries. <laughs> no wizard, no witch, no marabou. Only worries. If you live by worry, you are still 70 years old, but you have white hair. <laughs> there is a brother we met recently. The guy is in his 20s. But his hair is already white. <laughs> it's not like that because some people have a natural white hair and stuff like that. No, 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 no. That natural white hair, I say the blood of the father was so much in worry that he, he communicated that to the child. <laughs> the child is born with worry. <laughs> but the guy, he's still in his 20s. Just close to 30s. But he worries about everything. About everything. This is now, now he has to take medication just to sleep. These are spiritual matters. First thing, fear not. And now he said, I pray thee, open his eyes. There is a song that says, Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. Now, here's the thing. When you pray, Lord, open my understanding. You want to have an understanding to please God, not to argue with God. You want to have understanding to please Him. If my child I put together, somebody say a well last time, he said he delivered his children. <laughs> I say I, lie, I love the way you talk. The children I have delivered. They, I tell them do this and they argue. Hey, you didn't give me birth or I gave you birth. Oh? <laughs> this one. Before you start arguing, do what I said. Then ask question. But don't argue over it. Now, this is just a human being. Let me tell you how God works. First day first, he told to Adam and Eve, I say, that tree over there. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Eve said, ah. <laughs> Certainly, maybe, why not? But it was not because she wanted to displease God. But she has the ability to displease God. So the devil tapped into the ability to displease God while she was with God. So she had knowledge to please God. But the devil tapped into that knowledge to displease God. Does it make sense? And he told her, did really God told you you shall not touch any of the three? He never, he never said that. He only talked about one three, not all of them. So your knowledge is so that you know, so to please him, to know what to do. The Lord Jesus says, if he tells someone, a father tells someone to do something, and he does not do. And the second child, he tells him to do something. No, no. The first one, he tells him, do. He says, I will do, but he does not do. And the second one, he says, do. He says, I will not do, but he turns around, repent, and does. 
And the Lord just asks, between the two, who has obeyed? And the Pharisee said, the second one, I'm going to do. You may, you may fight with God, though. But at the end of the day, he has the last word. The quicker you do, the faster you find. Amen? When you finish discussing, disputing with God, you are still human. Am I right? See, if God decides to take you out, what will you do? You send him to the court. <laughs> so, why not associate with the one who can do everything than fight with the one who is able to do everything? But before you associate with him, you must not fear. You must tell to your flesh, you must be quiet. You must tell to your heart, you must stop pumping heart, I say heart, uh, blood in my streams like this. One time I was going to meet an administration. And as I was driving, I had to have an interview. And I was going driving. I was on the 70. And suddenly I was so concerned about the interview that I was feeling my brain, my temper. I was feeling it beating like... I said, Jesus. <laughs> ah. They are not before me. I'm in a car alone. They did not talk. They did not say there is nothing. Alone in the car. And I'm hearing the voices. <laughs> I did not even see them. But I realized I drove and all the details of the road, I did not even see it. I don't know how I drove. <laughs> I was like a functional robot. <laughs> Everything that was going on the road, I don't know. I don't remember. And then suddenly, my temper, like blood started now going in that, and you feel it that, like, like if you put your hand like that, you can feel it's a, like a beating. But when stress comes, you don't need to put your hand. You see, you'll take a good <laughs> so fear not because the matter of the problem is not that it is a problem is that you give a load to that problem If you don't know how you will do, is that by worrying you will know? So the Lord Jesus said, who among you, who by worry can add one cubit to his life? What, like, like, who can do that? You see them? Hey, Lord. Hey, Jesus. Hey, Lord, I don't know. But all those words, if you rather tell to you, your flesh be seated down. Be still. And then you come with the same word. Lord, show me the way. Isn't that better? One, you will not have health problem. That's the first thing. Because the Bible says that a, a merry heart is what? Medicine for the, for the soul. Some sickness, you go to the doctor. They put you in the MRI. Is that MRI? And when they finish, they say, we don't see anything you have. <laughs> and thank you. And they charge you over it. <laughs> All your problem is not detectable by human eyes. All your problems are not detectable with machinery. Is you worry too much. There is a time we call about where the sun and the moon align together. The eclipse. 
what happened in your life is that you have too much eclipse. Because the sun is supposed to give you light. At 3 p.m., when the sun and the moon are not each other in their own place, <laughs> suddenly at 3 p.m., you become dark. Are you know what I'm saying? At 3 p.m., where you are supposed to have sunshine, suddenly there is an eclipse in your life. Everything goes dark. Worries will not bring light. Stress over what you will do, what you will pay, what you will eat, where you will go, will not solve it. So the servant of Elijah, he went out, he saw, and he said, hey, what shall we do? He saw himself dead before to, <laughs> before to ask the question. Give me the word. Verse, 2 King chapter 6, verse 17. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. Now, you see? And the Lord opened. Now, how difficult is prayer? It's sometimes... I don't know how we conceptualize prayer. We conceptualize prayer in a way where we say something that has to travel. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. It has to travel, and then after when he arrives, it has to be opened. And when it's opened, it has to be carried. And when it's carried, it has to be. I always said. There are some type of prayer. When you scream too much, you know all you do is to energize yourself because you don't pray in faith. I do not say all type of prayer. I say some type. Imagine the Lord Jesus, he arrives. You see the devil in the life of the young boy who has the, palsy, no, the um, epilepsy. And suddenly you see Jesus. Hey, Jesus, I say, hey! Get out! <laughs> when he's finished, he's in sweating. The devil is still there, sitting like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't confuse. I'm not saying you do not pray with uh, fervent, uh, fervency. That's not what I'm saying. Whether you pray with fervency or not, it's not by screaming that the prayer is heard. It's by faith. It is by faith. So, your prayer in faith, what does it mean? Well, the Bible tells us, you say, Lord, open. And the Bible says, and the Lord, open. When? And then. Immediately. So your prayer does not take airplane. It does not go to the airport and wait for the airplane waiting. <laughs> and then when he's in the airplane, he does an escal. <laughs> and after escal, because listen, even if the devil fights your prayer, the Bible says when Daniel kneeled down, the prayer arrived. When he said, kneel, I meant the prayer arrived. So, see your prayers by faith. For the Lord Jesus said, when you pray and you... Mm, mm, what is belief? Belief is when you do an act of thanksgiving. Because you see, if I say, I will give you 1,000, you will only say amen. But when I give you, you say, hey, it's no more Amen. At that time, it's a Thanksgiving joy dance. So, I, I, you know what I'm saying? So, believe is to believe to, to, with Thanksgiving. Because now your heart is certain that what you have said, the Lord has heard. He will give you and your joy shall be complete. 
So why are you worrying? Say to your heart, why are you worrying? Oh, Lord Jesus. Is it like a shift, a transformation in the process of my thoughts, in the process of my heart, in the process of my mind that makes me, Lord, hmm, you say I should do this one. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but we're going to do it. Sometimes it may happen that you will need a hand that will hold you and pull you up. Sometimes you may happen that you will need somebody that will pray with you. Sometimes it may happen that you will need to just tell to yourself, to your heart, be still. But whatever that is, the Lord is not deaf. Hallelujah. He's not deaf. The only gods who cannot answer are the gods of the Chaldeans, the gods of the Baliams, the god of Baal. They cannot answer. They cannot see. Elijah said that Maybe he's sleeping. <laughs> uh, or he's, uh, yeah, or, he, or he's, uh, he's on the on the journey. <laughs> Hallelujah. But our God. When I ask you where is God, what would you say? He's everywhere. He's above. He's here. He's over here. He's over here. And then, he's over here. So if God is over here, why are you screaming over there? <laughs> oh, Lord, I thank you. Okay. Because you know he's inside. Ah, this one, it has to be a declic. When you know you carry the spirit of the Lord, it means that you have access all the time for your prayer to be. It like has to be a declic in your mind. See this way. For you to reach the White House, you need to go through protocol. Are you what I'm saying? Because you do not carry the line of the president. You don't have his phone number. But if it happens that the president now has given you his personal phone number and you carry it with your phone, honestly, would you go call the secretary? There are a type of people, we call them, I mean, a type of people. There is a service that we call, but anyway, it's a, a, a legal service. The legal service, the way, you, the way it works is that when you subscribe with them, if you have problem with anybody, with the law, with police officer, whatever, you just pick up your phone, you call them. And then they intervene. But that's because you already subscribe ahead of time. If you do not subscribe ahead of time and you have problem, you have to look for who will intervene. Are you following what I'm saying? If you already subscribe to the kingdom of God, hallelujah, all you have to do is like Elisha, just pray. And the Bible says, when he prayed, end. Hmm. You know, my wife and I, we were saying something. We're talking and then we say, oh, Lord, give us uh, just a big contract, a big contract. We need a big contract. <laughs> and the Lord gave us a big contract. And now the guy say, send, send us your bead. I say, what is that bead? <laughs> Where do we start? The reality is that sometimes you pray for having something. But sometimes you don't know that when you will have it, something else will be in that. Like she was saying, 
You pray to have a car. You pray. <laughs> you pray to have a car. Oh, like the car, the car. My sister. Now you have a car? They say, okay, insurance, 200. Ah, Jesus! <laughs> you thought that you were in a Bamenda where you can drive your car with insurance so <laughs> you are in America. <laughs> you have to pay the insurance. And then they say, ah, you have to do safety inspection. You go, your heart is beating. Because if you don't pass, you don't know what happened. So you arrive at the safety inspection. But there's a problem. They take your car and they send you back. <laughs> so, you, no, you, you are not sitting there. <laughs> they send you back. So you come back like you have passed exam. <laughs> And you have to receive a certificate. All you're looking for is whether file a, as a file and pass or fail. Ah, uh, you see? You see? Okay, you see? <laughs> he, even, he came with a certificate of, a, of a inspection in church. <laughs> you see? He says, pass. <laughs> His, his diploma. He took it like a Bible. <laughs> Amen. That's a reality. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you see, if they tell you you fail, they also tell you what is the problem. All it means, when you address the problem, you get the result. So address the problem in your life. Address them. If you don't address them and then you're seeking for the result, you will seek for a long time. And one of the problems is worries and fear. Address them. Address them. If you don't address them, listen. You, you ain't going to go to have result. No. You will only have frustration. But too much frustration also is not good for your life, your spirit, your soul, your family, your house, your business, your, your everything. There was a... In my country... There was a man, always when he sit down. Like, you know Bulldog? No, for real. He's always angry. <laughs> so, you're passing by, and you have the mistake to say, Bonjour, Tonton. <laughs> He's always angry. But you see, it's that type of things that make you not to go further. Because even somebody wants to help you, your demeanor will make them go away. Let the Spirit of God help you deal with things that prevent you to go further. The day God says you're finished on earth, that one is finished. But as long as you have breath of life, who told you you were finished? Like who? Oh, Jesus. Who told you that uh, your line was finished? And now you're acting that like there is no tomorrow. Go ask to who? Moses. His last time he spoke with Pharaoh was, if I see you, I kill you. 
So Pharaoh, he has already the certificate of death for Moses. Because Pharaoh knew what he did. That's why he fled. So why would you go back where they told you they will kill you? Because God has another chapter for his life. He believed more God than the problem that he has put himself in. Because to start with, God did not send him to go kill that guy. So you yourself, you manufacture your problem. You are in problem. But God still is willing to deliver you. So all you have to do is to surrender. Instead of looking at your life like a limitation, look at God as unlimited. Because the day you expire, that day you will know. <laughs> you won't be found on earth. If today do not work, tomorrow it will. When tomorrow come, it becomes today. <laughs> if it did not work, tomorrow it will. I will not lose hope simply because I see the line blurry. No. No. There is a purpose why my neighbor was gone and I'm still on earth. Are you following? When you are two people going somewhere and one is taken and one is left, it is to let you know your line and your, 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 your spirit. Your spirit. Your aspiration date has not arrived. So instead of acting, moving, walking, talking, functioning as an aspire matter, function as a child of the king. Can the child of the king be afraid of the jailer? When you drive and you see police officer, if you have no problem, why would you be afraid of them? But the only time you are afraid is when you speed and you see them pass by. <laughs> At that time, your old demeanor like break. <laughs> because you see yourself with a ticket. <laughs> Amen. But if you have done anything, you don't care. If you do not steal a car of somebody and the police officer is in your back, is that your problem? It's not your problem. But if you stole, when he's in your back, <laughs> you, you're already looking for the exit. You see what I'm saying? So what I'm trying to say is that do not look at this life as a limitation or a line that has been drawn that you cannot pass. Because the day you expire, you will know. Meaning you won't be here. So why are you letting worries, fear, to confuse you? Because you see the enemy are numerous. Because you see the problem are numerous. Because you see the difficulties are numerous. They call you. They say climb the mountain. You look up. You see the destination. Instead of keeping your eyes on the destination, you keep your eyes on the rock. Fearing whether the rock will fall. The Lord said, keep your eyes on. He is a destination. And Paul says, I keep on pressing, forgetting the things of the past until I reach the goal. The day you are pulled out and you're ready to go, Again, when you go, you go. Sometimes you go, even God says, it's not your time, come back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Like Elijah. Oh Lord, I am not better than my grand-grandfather. My fathers, I cannot understand why is it Jezebel has sent me these people. Hey God, take me, let me die. God said, you will stay, you, you will stay, and you will stay, <laughs> and 
And after he said, take me, I want to die. God said, yo, go see that widow. Make me, make me regular over there. Because somebody is waiting for you. You see what I'm saying? Somebody is, somebody is waiting for me. Somebody is waiting for me. The Bible says that the world is waiting for what? The manifestations of the sons of God. All you see is your problem. You are 25 years old and you walk like this. <laughs> 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 is that normal? <laughs> no. There was a lady who came here. She's about like she what, ninety years old. Mama Alice. She not only she's ninety years old, but her feet is a uh, um, lame, shortened. And because it's shortened, she has a dis dislocation over here. But she walked the stair, go and down like a, there is a flat place. But this one. <laughs> she took the stair. She went to, came to church. She cleaned the church. I was upstairs. She comes. She comes. <laughs> I, I said, who? <laughs> I said, are you all right? What happened? She said, this guy, this guy, he's not little, he's not easy. I said, hey. <laughs> a 90 years old who has a lame foot can take this one and smile. You are not 50. <laughs> Go, go do some exercise. <laughs> Hallelujah. She said, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a, how we call it? In a garage, there is a, a trade mill. So when she sees a trade mill and she sees somebody on it, hey, are we, are we come on? Hey, are we come on? I will do the treadmill. Oh. <laughs> Five years later, have you been on the treadmill? No. no. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> you, you have even a solution in your home. But you see, so you got to shift. Hallelujah. You have to shift. You have to come to a place where you yourself, you say, hey, listen, this is the plans that God has put in my life. I am not expired. Hallelujah. I am not expired. You see, Paul said, if it is for him alone, he is ready to go. He is ready. He is ready to leave and go. But for the sake of others, meaning, you have something important that God wants to utilize to give or to bless or to help somebody else. But if you leave fear, worries, anxieties to rule your heart, your heart will keep on beating too fast. And at the end of the day, you will be weakened. But God does not answer the prayer of worries. James, is, is that John? 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 Is that James? John or James? He says, when you pray, believe. Amen? If you don't have wisdom that you pray, believe. But if you pray and then you are wavering, how much you receive? Nothing. James. And yet you prayed. Every prayer is not a prayer. The prayer of faith is that that the Lord answers. 
But you cannot pray in faith until you tell your heart, be still. Until you tell your mind, be ye transformed. You got put in your mind the bullet of the word. What did the Lord say? The circumstances something, but what did the Lord say? So focus on the word of God. Focus on the promise of God. And then ask him to give you wisdom to deal with the circumstances so you know how to navigate. But still, God mercy says when Elisha prayed, Lord open his eyes. And the Lord opened his eyes. And he saw. Hmm. God is willing for you to see the promise and to enter the promise. Hmm. Tell to yourself, I have not expired. I have not expired. According to you, what is the most complicated things that God cannot do? It's nothing. It's nothing. The only thing he cannot do exists in your mind. Are you know what I'm saying? It does not exist in his ability. It does not exist in his capacity. It does not exist in his attributes. He can do anything. But you must fear. You must not fear. You must fear nothing. When fear arrives, tell it. Go back where you came from. When anxiety arrives, tell it. Go back where you came from. You have been given a share in the kingdom of God. So that the, through you, the will of God be made and done in heaven and on earth. If you say nothing, the devil will have reason over you. So you have to have what I call the holy wrath. To say no. This thing will not be in my life. No. No, 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 no. Even when the adversity burns you, you must remain standing by, hey, Jesus, thank you. You must. Ah. Is that because they believe God that uh, the three Hebrew boys were not threw in the fire? Don't think because you believe God then nothing will happen. No. But... Remember, the situation of uh, the, the, the servant is that even in the midst of the opposition, even though that the opposition did not change, his mind shifted. Are you what I'm saying? Everything shifted in him. He has now certainty because he saw the deliverance of God. So the Hebrew boys, they say, ah, King, we honor you. But what you ask us to do, if it means we have to lose our job, please fire us. Hey, somebody hear it. What you ask me to do, even it means that I will have to sleep outside, please send me out. You see, they were already captive. You feel what I'm saying? They were already captive anyway. So what, the, what better thing can happen to them? 
you, I mean, you're already captive. So when you find yourself already in problem, is that by worrying that the problem go? So if you are in problem, turn the gear and then start now your faith in God. Are you know what I'm saying? So they were already captive. So instead of, instead of looking at the captivity, they look at God. And they told to the one who captured them. That even if you had power to capture me, you don't have power to change my heart. Hey, Jesus. Ah, God, Lord, help me with this one. Before I started doing this, I made a covenant with God. That Lord, whatever you say I will do, that I will do. And the Lord told me that when you start ministry, child, no one, nothing. But you know, you are in America, okay? But America is under God. Hallelujah. So the one who is above all told me, when you start ministry, charge nothing. And do everything you do for. Every person I heard, from the bishop to the prophets, from the apostles to the pastors. Hey, man of God, you are in America, oh. You cannot do that, oh. You will dry, you will die, because you will not eat. I told them, listen, I made a covenant with God. So 10 years, I did not even, like 10 years. Whatever God has given me, no less than 80% went back in ministry. 10 years straight down the road. So the Hebrew boys, they know that if God said, they will have to do because he is able to deliver them. So in the midst of fire, against fire, that's when even they say, I will stand for God. Are you following? I always say to people, if you say that you will stand for the Lord, the day they put a gun on your head, and you cannot stand for God on your job, brother, sister, when the gun arrives, please leave. <laughs> because that day you will deny him. If in the little things, you cannot put your foot down to say, I stand with God. But when you stand with God, even if he allows you to go in the fire, hey, he's capable to deliver. The Bible say there was a third, a, a, a fourth man who stood in that even the smell of the fire was not on them. Are you following? The devil may computerize problem against you, but when you stand with God, the smell and that memory of that problem will not be on you. Because the Lord, all he wants you to do is to affirm his name. Say, I am not expired. I am not expired. Lord, open his eyes that he may see. Give him by the word and we'll come and we we'll finish. Verse 19, 2 Kings 6, 19, 18. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite these people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elijah. Hallelujah. Amen. Allel oh, Jesus. There are two things that God does. Answer. His will and your word. He the Bible says, when he said, the Lord did according to 
It's worldwide. Let me tell you something. It says, if you de in yourself in the Lord, he will grant you the Elisha at that point did not pray, Lord, shall I strike them? He could have done so, but he didn't. Because he understood now his authority. Are you what I'm saying? I always pay, take this example. When you are a police officer, that you have been sworn as a police officer, you never call to know how are you going to arrest the criminal. When you see the criminal, automatically you are invested. I mean, you are already invested. Automatically you function because you know you were already invested. So when you look at a criminal and you say freeze, you don't just use your word. You take also your gun. I you what I'm saying? But your gun is in your, how is it that? Holster for the whole time. You have the authority and the power, but you don't utilize like just like that. Are you know what I'm saying? But when the necessity of the situation demands it, you don't call 1092, 1092, shall I shoot? Shall I shoot? <laughs> By the time you receive the answer, you are expired. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know you already invested and empowered for situation. So when the situation demands it, you have authority and power to solve it right there. After your supervisor can come and you can give report, but right there, you solve it first. Because if you don't, you are expired. Somebody come, you pull over the car. Many times, people come up the car with guns to shoot the police officer. Just like that. Just over a pullover. So you see, the, on the police officer come, there is one, he was coming. He stood at the thing and he said, okay, can I have your paper? And suddenly I see the police officer. All he asked was your paper. And right after. And then suddenly he took off his uh, gun and you see the guy in the in the in the in the car who comes out with a Kalashnikov. Imagine that police officer. He's, because he's a Kalashnikov guy, he saw against him. Imagine he sees it. And then, oh, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> As he's crying to scream, he pray Jesus, he aspire. <laughs> you got to put that in your mind correctly. As the, the, the power and the ability and the authority that God has given you is to utilize it whenever the situation demands it. And he prayed. Open his eyes. And the Lord opened his eyes. And then he said, smite them with blindness. And the Lord smote them with blindness. If you let circumstances and situation have reason of you, you will live frustrated in anxieties and you will not be fulfilled and you will not fulfill. You are saved, you go to heaven, when you arrive, they give you Lego <laughs> as your house. <laughs> because the Bible says that when you arrive, they will give you according to what you did here. So you see, this, the thief and the drug addict, they have mentioned, when you arrive, you have a badge over here, prophet, pastor, Apostle, evangelist, when you arrive, you stand like that, 
Jesus, yeah, how you doing? How you doing? Oh, my God. And Jesus says, and this is a Lego for you. <laughs> your, your reward will be so small. Because you did not fulfill the will of your king on earth. If you are sent to build and you did not build, you did not fulfill the will of your king. I pray that this sounds in your mind and your soul. That you refuse to just be a common person. The Bible says we are supernatural. And we serve a supernatural God. Because you are first spirit. Amen? And you are supernatural because the Bible says that when you have believed in God, you died by being baptized. Uh, uh, that baptism is that you are bare. Read. Second, Corinthians, second Chronicles, uh, uh, second uh, Corinthians says that whosoever is in Christ is what? A new. All oh, this is supernatural. Everything old has passed away. Make a decision from today on to speak to your eyes, to your soul, to your heart, to your mind. To be still when the opposition, when the circumstances are screaming against you. And make a firm resolution that you will fulfill every single of the plan that was designed by the architect. Uh, architect. The beauty of your life is not that you did much. The beauty of your life is that you did all. Hallelujah. So do not settle for much. Settle for all. Everything that was in the plate that it was written, that I must do, I will fulfill them all. Because I was not called for a portion of it. If he said you are able to do all, it means you are able to do all. So instead of limiting yourself and give yourself boundaries and borders, let God tell you where your limits are. Hallelujah. Let God tell you where your limits are. When he sent them to Israel, to the land, he was the one who told them where the border of the land was. Amen. He said, from this mountain to these rivers to this lake, all this shall be your territory. Hallelujah. So let God tell your border and your limitation. But whatever he did not limit you, don't limit yourself because it's difficult. Mm -mm. Please don't do that. Don't limit yourself because he's stressful. Mm -mm. Don't limit yourself because he's complicated. Because your God is specialized in the complicated matter. So please do not limit yourself. Shall we pray? I bless your name, Lord God, for you are good. And you are good forevermore. It is by your good will, Lord God, that you have not only spoken to us today, but by your good will that you have established your word in our lives. I pray that each one of us be completely saturated with your will and that in your perfect will, our heart be always keen, always ready to fulfill all your good pleasure. The word of God says that Samuel the prophet, he did not let any one of the word of God fall on the ground that he fulfilled them all. So Lord, I pray that whatever you have spoken in our lives, whatever you have planned in our lives, first reveal them to us. And as you reveal them to us, cause each one of us, Lord God, to fulfill each one of them 
to the fullness of it. And I pray, God, that none of them shall fall on the ground. And I pray, Father, that every worries, every anxieties, every contrary situation, every plans of the enemy that is being drawn before us, I pray, Father God, that as we come, we come as a thunder and it be scattered. So we go through and we go above and we go as you say in order to enter whatever place you have sent us for. Whatever person that is the one that you have a design and appointed unto us let it be fulfilled i pray god that the heart of each one of us will be encouraged strengthened will be changed revived and transformed transformation and change transformation and change let it be a new ship let it be a new ship in order to fulfill your good pleasure in the name of jesus christ of nazareth amen amen amen